Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. Now in the last video, I promised all of you that we'll be doing a Q&A session and that video was meant to be done on the very next day, but actually I got a little busy with the visa and all of the stuff. Uh, but here am I making no excuses in here and we're gonna talk about the Q&A section and I'll be taking some of your comments from the YouTube and I'll try to answer them. In this channel, we talk about programming, web apps, mobile apps, and everything related to about programming and real technology. So in case you are new here, consider subscribing. Now, obviously I cannot take all of the questions because uh, simply there are a lot of them. And if, it'll, if I'll try to answer all of them in very detail, it, it will take a half an hour video or a one hour video. And nobody likes that much long video. So I'll start and I'll pick up a few questions. I'll be, ans I'll be reading them from my screen and you'll be seeing them in the bottom section below. So let's get started. And it says, the first question is from Shayon. I hope I'm not butchering down your name, but What's about problem solving depression? After learning first programming language, I go for problem solving, but I stuck on there. Sometimes it's like problem solving is not for me or how can this be a beginner level problem? Still, I don't give up. Your advice can help me out on, on this kind of stuck. So please respond. Okay. Uh, problems are good. Uh, they are not the end of the world. In fact, uh, if you are following up me up me on the Facebook, I recently posted that uh, it took me almost 40 hours to figure out where am I missing uh, the curly braces there. Now, obviously, some of you might be thinking, hey, brackets and all those editors automatically do this for you. How can you miss that? But yes, incidents do happen. And it's it's one, one approach that you can look out for is, first of all, read the errors. That's the most important advice I can give it to you. Now, before searching for the errors, you should be aware of what kind of error you are dealing with. For example, I knew already that somewhere I'm missing a curly braces. Uh, it's not like I'm just rendering, randomly doing things in here and there. I, I knew exactly that what I'm missing in here, there is a syntax error that I'm missing up. So first advice would be look out and read the errors properly. If you are good in reading the errors, then you can do tons of stuff. And all those pen tester guys would be agreeing with me that yes, uh, reading those errors is super important, whether it's an SQL injection or maybe debugging your own error. So first tip would be to look out and read properly what your error is. Now, again, a good resource, everybody knows it is a Google, but I would say instead of Googling the simple error, try to look out on the Stack Overflow. I know Google is a big giant, big dog in the game, but looking out your error on the Stack Overflow can be much more helpful. You can straightforwardly get your answer. And eventually with the practice, you will realize that a lot of errors you have already overcome in the past and you can solve them pretty easily. So that is your response. Now, second is a very interesting question by Hari, and he says, is it important to study algorithm and data structure thoroughly to work in a big company? And I would say absolutely yes. Now, uh, in case you don't know, I recently, a couple of months back, I got an offer from Amazon to work for, work for them. And uh, I denied the offer because basically it was more over about the C++ profile and I didn't want it to go into that. Uh, although it was a good offer in the States, uh, but I didn't took that offer. So all of uh, that I can say is a big amount or a big amount of problems that big giants are facing like Amazon's and uh, Google and Facebook is they have a tons of data and how to manage that data is the important part. And if you look out for the interview process and everything, you'll figure out that they focus quite a lot on the data structure, how the data is being managed, uh, the tree organizations or how the data is being retrieved, merge sort, and all these sortings and uh, managing, stacking of the data, linkings, lists, and all of these are pretty important. So yes, uh, thoroughly reading about the data structures and data management is pretty solidly important if you want to go into those companies. Now, coming up on to the next is by an IT engineer. Hey, IT engineer, I receive a lot of your emails, but uh, sadly, uh, I'm not able to respond all of them, but I'm trying my best, first of all. Now, going on to that, your question, how to remember the code syntax? Now, I would say uh, your problem is not just basically about 
uh, remembering the code syntax. Your problem is how to remember the code syntax when you are switching from one language. And I would say yes, at first it's not that easy because I switch languages quite often uh, from Python to Swift, from Swift to JavaScript. So yes, it's not that much easy. Uh, but eventually you will realize that it's it's a little bit of the syntax and within a few lines of code, maybe uh, just 200 or 300 lines of codes will make you quite frankly freely about the code syntax. But yes, uh, I don't remember them uh, that much also. Uh, before I switch my language, I quickly go through some uh, syntax and PDFs and just look out for what are the syntax, make a quick hello world or to-do list and it gives me much more frequently. But if you're looking that, hey, how to remember only one language syntax, I would say just stay with it for, for almost five or six months and the syntax will become breeze to you. So no big deal there. Uh, practice is the key. There is no such uh, hidden secret you are asking for. Shubham Sharma asked, hello, I am Shubham. My question is that can we learn programming without going college? Absolutely. Uh, look, in fact, uh, going into the big companies and all of these doesn't require a college degree. Uh, and in fact, I know a lot of big giant instructor names uh, uh, from uh, the profiles where I teach. Uh, they are not at all college graduate, but still are doing fantastic in their companies. Uh, so yes, definitely it's not important that you go to college. College studies are completely different from the coding. You can take a few boot camps or maybe you can take a few online classes or offline classes and you can prepare your portfolio profile and that should be solid of course because you are competing with the people who have gone to the college and you haven't gone to the college so your profile and portfolio should be rock solid create those apps or mobile apps or web apps or websites that whatever you are creating should have a lot of features and it should feel to the guys that yes uh, this guy has done something rock solid instead of going college and we should definitely hire him. So definitely it's possible to learn programming and everything without going to the college. And Ashish asked, hey, uh, can I get your email ID? My email ID is uh, already quite public. If you ask, I would say hitesh at the rate hiteshchaudhary.com. You can see that in the tag below the video as well. Pretty public email I have got. And the final question that we will be answering is, you are sharing great knowledge to the point, really appreciate. Thank you so much, uh, Sanket. And I would like to get answer to my question, how should one get started in UI UX, like XML of Android development, as well as iOS? Please make a separate video on this topic. Yeah, sure, for sure, I can make a separate video on that. But uh, to be honest, uh, UI UX is not about XML or uh, the views in the iOS, it's a completely different subject. And for that, uh, you should be looking up to learn uh, apps like a Sketch and everything. And there is a complete different uh, subject uh, there. It's not related to programming. UI and UX is completely about how user is gonna behave or is gonna think when he is going to interact with your app. And there are a lot of great courses, great books by there. In fact, if you can just mail me, I can link you up with some instructors. Uh, who are teaching UI UX, but again, to be honest, it's not a programming subject. It's a completely different uh, animal there. In fact, uh, recently I also took a couple of lessons from those instructors because my apps were good, but client were somehow not feeling good about the app. So I took a few classes from them and they taught me how the menu should be layout or uh, what menu should be displayed on the front because we have got just a very small screen there and we have to adjust everything in there. So they have a complete different scenario of wireframing the app, which button should be there, what color should be used. So it's moreover about the designing and graphic process and not about XML or Swift or iOS. It's, it's a complete different subject. So you are looking at it at a very wrong way. Just look at it from the designer's perspective and that would be good, I would say. So with this, I would say that uh, this was all that was in my mind for the Q&A. Definitely in the future, we'll do some more Q&A and we'll be uh, back with those kinds of videos. For this uh, video, I would say that much only for this video. And uh, if you think that this video was helpful for somebody, uh, make sure you share it and I'll catch you up in the next video.